All right, we shift gears now to turn to an effort on the federal level that would change the way the government views weed. Kent is here to break down the new plan to end the national prohibition on pot. That's right. Senators Cory Booker, Chuck Schumer, and Ron Wyden have unveiled a plan that would remove cannabis from the Controlled Substances Act and essentially decriminalize it. Now, the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act would also expunge nonviolent convictions, set the minimum age for sales at 21, and put a tax on products, just like there is now on alcohol and tobacco. Plus, set up loans for small cannabis businesses and nonprofits. Now, this plan still has a long way to go in Washington, and it would not automatically change state laws. But today I spoke to a state leader on this topic about why a federal change like this is still potentially big news. To understand how a federal shift on cannabis could impact us in Minnesota, it's important to understand where our relationship currently stands. There are really a lot of limitations all around. Chris Thokas is director of Minnesota's Office of Medical Cannabis, which oversees our state's legal program and two authorized producers. Normally, as a state uh, employee, we look to the feds for our guidelines and regulations, and there essentially are none in the cannabis space. So even in the, the realm of like cultivation, normally we would look to the feds and say, oh, what's your pesticide list for this plant? There isn't one. What other ways does this kind of come into conflict sometimes? One of the top questions that we get from patients in our office is um, they call when they're about to travel out of state, whether it's vacation, a work trip, um, just going to visit someone, and they want to know how they properly bring their medication with them. And the answer, unfortunately, is you don't. Because it's still a federal Schedule One drug, the TSA won't let you carry it across state lines. And the DEA and ATF will also hold it against you no matter what your state says. So people who are um, legal participants in a medical cannabis program cannot legally own or purchase a firearm. Chris says she'd like to see that change, whether it's through the new legislation or at least removing cannabis from the Schedule One drug list. The definition of a Schedule One substance, um, inherent in that definition is that it has no proven medical use. And that's just not true for marijuana. And so I think that it would go a long way to get rid of that designation. And if we do, Chris says most importantly, we stand to learn a whole lot more about it. There is currently only one farm in Mississippi with federal approval to grow marijuana for research. And access and funding for studies are all severely limited by the plant's Schedule One status. There's always this chicken and egg, right, that people are hesitant to grow our programs because they want to hear from the FDA or that the medications work or have been tested or they want empirical evidence, they want clinical trials. And if we don't even have the ability to engage in any of that, we're not going to get there. Now Chris says they've had to get pretty creative to help support the limited medical studies that have happened so far. For example, she says one oncologist looking to study cancer patients who use pot for pain wasn't legally able to possess it or provide it to those patients. So he had to recruit Minnesota's patients who could legally buy it themselves. And that is a little problematic when you're trying to conduct a study. Jeff. Yeah, a bit. So any chance, Kent, that this passes, that this federal legislation? Uh, in the current form, not anytime soon. There's some Democrats and a lot of Republicans in the Senate that would block it. But President Biden has said that he'd like to decriminalize or deschedule it, and that could help. And of course, Senate Majority Leader is supporting it. So that means it's going to be here as a talking point. All right. Thanks, Kent.